this is a solution to the Larry Owen problem that we did in, in class. But I wanted to start, if you remember, about this idea of entity, because it's pretty important in this um, example that we realize that Larry is separate from his law practice. So in, if you remember from the previous one of the previous videos, I said that Larry, in this case, or a person, gives money to his, his law practice. And that's a, subtra a minus for Larry but it's a plus, at least in cash, for Larry Owen's um, law practice. So please, so we, it's important to remember that Larry is separate from his law practice and we are doing the accounting for his law practice. So I'm gonna go through this transaction by transaction and show you how to record these. The first transaction is Larry Owen is starting a law practice. On July 1st, he invested $5,000 in the new law practice. So the law practice, if you remember, it went up in um, ca the cash balance went up so it's an increase or a debit in cash that it also the equity also increased meaning that there's now owners to this firm so that increase in equity is a credit entry of five thousand dollars the next transaction is he paid nine hundred dollars which was for office rent for three months what we want to recognize is that he has a decrease in cash of nine hundred dollars because he paid that the first month $300 is the only thing we're recording in these transactions as expenses. The other $600 is prepaid expenses because all we're doing is for the month of July and these, the $600, is for August and September. So we want to put it in this prepaid rent. The next transaction, he purchased office equipment for cash of $3,700. So often again, you start with the cash value and you say, what happened to cash? And then you um, then we're going to put it into a office equipment account, and it's a long-term asset because it's something that's going to last longer than a year. This is office equipment he's using. So we have a credit to cash and a debit to another asset that's called office equipment. The next thing is that he purchased from Alpha Company office supplies of $60 and office equipment of $300. So we're going to assume the supplies are used up in that particular month. And so what happened is that there was, no, um, there was no transaction according to cash because it says here he, he purchased it on credit, which means that he didn't pay them. So we now have an accounts payable for the sum of this $60 and $300. Accounts payable was $360. 300 of it went into office equipment. Again, it's long-term when it says it's equipment. And then 60 was expensed during that particular period for the office supplies. The next transaction, he completes legal work for a client and immediately collects a $500 fee. So this is an income of $500 and he received $500 cash. The next one, he paid his sal secretary salary for the first two weeks of July of $400. An increased expense is a debit entry and a decrease in cash of $400 is a credit entry. He signed a contract with Coastal Realty to do legal work on a fixed fee basis for $300 a month. He received the fee for the first month and a half. So what happens here is he's, he is on retainer, what is called retainer with Coast Realty, and they're going to call him periodically for uh, advice. Um, and this is at $300 a month he receives. So for the first month of July, he received $300. Um, for the but he didn't he received four hundred and fifty dollars cash so we need to recognize that cash went up by four hundred and fifty dollars the extra hundred and fifty dollars is actually a liability for the law practice because he owes coast realty um these this service that he received payment for but he owes them so we have a 450 debit a 150 credit and a 150 credit i mean a 300 credit um, so then the next one is he complete legal work. So again, he did some more work for $1,000, um, but he billed the client. It means he didn't get cash for it. So we're going to put $1,000 here, and then we're going to put $1,000 in accounts receivable. He paid his secretary salary for the second. So we put another $400 cash, and then we increased salaries by $400. The next is um, he withdrew $200 from his law practice. So what happened is he said to himself, gosh, I need money for rent, for my own rent or for my groceries. And I gave all my money to Larry Owen's law practice. So I need to write a check from Larry Owen's op law practice to Larry Owen's for $200. So that's the decrease of $200. And what that means is that now he no longer has an, a, as much equity in the, in the law practice. He only has $4,800 now. Um, but that's he can do that. That's not a problem. It's not an expense because it's not part of doing business with the firm. 
the client paid this $1,000 legal fee back that was earned in, in, in an earlier transaction. So we don't affect this because we already included this. What we do is we say, okay, $1,000 decrease in receivable and a $1,000 increase in cash. The next is that he paid Alpha Company $100 of the $360 that's owed. So he took $100 out of what he owed out of cash and decreased what they owed for the um, earlier transaction. And then these last two, he paid July phone bill of $30 and July electric bill of $30. So he has these two utility charges and two decreases in cash. So now we're done um, closing, we're done recording all the transactions. The next thing we're going to do is close the accounts. So if you remember, what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines under everything and then calculate balances. Oh, there's an extra $400. That shouldn't be there. So make sure you notice I'm going to delete that in a minute. I drew lines under everything. And now I'm going to put balances under those things. I did this really quickly, I know, but I did it offline. And I just include this at zero. I don't really need to include that um, account anymore, but I'm going to just track it. The next thing after that is we want to take all of these accounts, expenses and income, and we want to close them out into a net income account because those these do not remain on the balance sheet. So we're going to double entry all of these values into this net income account, then calculate the net income for the period, which is $580. He made that amount in the period. Sorry, my dog just barked. Um, so then what we're going to do is we actually need to close out that account into account that's into a permanent equity account that's retained earnings. Put it in there and then I total it up. The next thing I'm going to do is create a, ba a balance sheet. So all of the balances from these T accounts are put into the balance sheet. And I'm really happy because when I do that, I can see that this number is equal to that number, which means I must have done something right. Um, and you can go ahead and track this if you want to make sure that it matches what you did also. The next thing I'm going to do is create a balance sheet, I mean an income statement, and this is for the month. So I have the, the income and then itemized expenses to be net income. Now I hope that helps you to um, know the solution for Larry Owen's law practice.